that someone wants to understand Islam, we must study Islamic history, and particularly the history of Prophet and his family members. The reason I say this is because if you look at most of our Sunni brothers, and we love them to death, our religions, our practices of our schools of thought are not that separate. I mean, Shias say you must have your hands at your side. Sunni say you may. You know, uh, there's not much difference between us. We say it's wajib that you make sajda on something from the earth. They say you can. You may. Differences are not that much, except in this aspect, understanding of Islam in its historical context. History of Islam, it opens up the whole story of Islam, you could say, from then until now. And I began reading it. When I got to the section on Imam Hussein, alayhi salatu wasalam, I was flabbergasted, stunned, shocked to find out that Imam Hussein had been surrounded at Karbala and killed. I couldn't fathom it, I couldn't believe it, that the grandson of the Prophet, whom even as Sunnis we learn that Prophet loved him so much, that the fact that he was surrounded and killed by Muslims, it shocked me. So this I had to go to the masjid with. And I went to the masjid and I called the Shaykh and I said, Shaykh, you have to explain this to me. What happened at Karbala? This is the Sunni Shaykh of the masjid. He told me, brother, Islamic history is a black and bloody history and it has no relevance to us today. Don't read it. Being a person who had studied the writings of Marcus Garvey, Marcus Garvey is like a prophet to Rastafarians. Marcus Garvey has a famous saying where he says, a people without knowledge of their history is like a tree without roots. So when this Sunni Sheikh is going to tell me that Islamic history is irrelevant, has no relevance, it's black and it's bloody, don't study it, an alarm bell went off in my mind. I felt that he was trying to keep me away from something. And so this pushed me in the direction to study more. The fact that the beloved of Hazrat Rasulullah, one of the masters of the youths of paradise, that our brothers al Sunnah, they accept that Hussein is one of the Sayyidiyya, Ahl, the, the Shabbat Ahl Jannah. He's one of the masters of the lords of paradise, the lords of the youth of paradise. How is it that this man, what is it, like 50, 60 years after Hijrah is surrounded and put to death? I think that most of our Sunni brothers don't even know about this. Or if they know about it, they haven't understood it, haven't read about it. When we were Ahlul Sunnah, it's as though he never grew up. We learn about Imam Hussein as, as Ahlul Sunnah. Our Sunni brothers know about Imam Hussein and Imam Hassan, but only in the context of their childhood. You look at ahadith that are contained in Sahih Muslim or Sahih Bukhari, 99.9% .9 of them are concerned with these young men as children in the company of Hazrat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we only were to look into it from that point of view, we would think that they never grew up. These guys must have died when they were 8, 9, 10 years old, because we don't hear anything else about them. I think that a lot of people are amazed when they read about the history, particularly not just of Islam, but of the family members of Prophet Muhammad. What happens to his family members after his death? This is something that none of our brothers can escape from. Because if someone's a liar, you leave him alone. He's got a big mouth and he lies. Forget about him. Because falsehood is very weak. But if someone is speaking the truth, and it's against you, then the only way to deal with the power of that truth that's against you is to oppress, repress, imprison, kill, slaughter, so on and so forth. And when we look at the history of Prophet's family after his death, this is exactly the fashion that his family was dealt with.